Buddy, does it get any better? Not in my books. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm with a real good friend of mine, Dennis Bester from Own Sound. And I said, Dennis, I got a place in northwestern British Columbia on the ocean called Millbank Sound. Lots of coho, lots of springs. I lost a 45 last night. We've only been on the water for 15, 20 minutes, and it doesn't get any better, does it? No, and that's not a fish story. You did lose a 45. I did, but right now we got two 30s, and we've only been fishing for 15 minutes. Stick with us, because we're still going fishing. <laughs> I'm going fishing all the time, and my baby's going fishing too. Bet your life that your sweet wife can catch more fish than you. And a fish will bite if you got the right bait. Now here's a little something that I'd like to relate with my pole and my line. I'm going fishing, yes I'm going fishing, my baby's going fishing too. Going Fishing with Daryl Cronzi is brought to you in part by Ontario, more to discover, Yamaha Motor Canada, and by Montana's Cookhouse. Closed captioning of Going Fishing is brought to you by Fish Crisp. Today's saltwater fishing along the northern coast of British Columbia is fast and furious. In fact, the sport fishing for both Chinook and Coho salmon in this far northern corner of the province is at an historical high. The implementations of sound conservation measures combined with favorable climatic conditions over the past decade and a half have witnessed a rebound in the fabled British Columbia sport fishery. No place on the Pacific has this dramatic turnaround in spectacular saltwater trolling been more focused than in the waters in and around Millbank Sound. It's a fisherman's paradise located approximately 20 miles north of Bella Bella, British Columbia. Stay with us as Cronzy and his good fishing buddy Dennis Bester troll the waters of Millbank Sound in search of the mighty Chinook and high-flying coho salmon. <laughs> the double header going, we've been out what, 15 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Yours goes one way, mine goes the other. I was just asking, uh, asking before how far I was from Ontario to Whoa. BC because I gotta go to BC to catch fish like this now. <laughs> you can't, can't do it in Ontario. Own, you can't do them in Own Sound anymore. You got her. Is this nice or what, Dennis? Oh, beautiful. Hey. Beautiful. Dennis, I, I'm positive I got a spring here. I'm not quite sure yet. I think I got one too, but just the way he went down, down. So it's You're not down, running so flasher, oh, eh? Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. Here he goes. Get your adrenaline going, eh, Dan? I haven't heard this. Uh, haven't heard this real scream like this for years. Uh -oh. I'm okay. He's back here. You okay? Yeah. Dennis, I got a spring. I know that. Yes. I think we got a pair of springs. <laughs> hey, the sun's not even up yet. A banger. First thing in the morning, eh? Yep. How far? How far are you out, Dennis? I'm right below the boat, but I'm down fairly deep, so you should be okay over there. Now mine sounded too. He's down there. Easy. Okay. I got some weight here too. <sighs> Mine felt like a good one, Dan. You right there? I'm right here. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at here. But I'm deep. <laughs> I got to take mine I got a spring. I just side. don't know. It's pretty good size. You're still down? Just hang, hang on. I got to get it. I got to go under, go Dennis. Go under. I got to go under. <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> hey, that's only a 25 pounder. <laughs> I'm going to let Steve get mine, Dennis. Then he can get yours. That's a nice fish. Oh, yeah. yeah First baby. thing in the morning, Dennis. <laughs> 30? Oh, mother. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh. Hey, uh, don't forget about me, Kronzi. We won't. We won't. <laughs> Just because you got yours, I want to get mine in, too. 
Little action in the morning, Dennis. No kidding, eh? Holy smokers. Hey, uh, you want a hand? <laughs> well, I'm going around in circles here right now. You need help? <laughs> <laughs> Mine's in the box, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll be there shortly. Holy smokers, then. Look at this thing streaming live. Hey, do you love BC or do you oh, love BC? It's great. Now, we have been out only 15 minutes. 15 hey, just minutes, got the rods yeah. down. I'm running a flasher. You went straight with a cut plug, eh? Yeah, and you know what? I love these mooching reels. Never used one before, and I love it. You know, you, you couldn't do this in own sound. You know why? 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 You tell me why. <laughs> First of all, there's no fish like this anymore. <laughs> why are there no fish like this? Uh, case I don't of, really want to get He's missing that. fins, but anyways. <laughs> I says to Dennis, when you're going to fight these BC fish, they got all their fins. <laughs> they got all their legs, yeah. All their legs and all their arms. Is this fine? Mine's 30 pounds. Really? Yeah. yeah. Let's see if we can... Uh, you know, I'm not saying a better fisherman puts them in the box faster, but why are you playing with this fish? I don't want to say I want to beat you on weight, but <laughs> I, want to, I want to beat you on weight. I want to say, and, I, and this is, again, no fish story. Dennis and I went out last night with Steve, our guide, and I lost a fish at the boat that was 45 to 50 pounds, Steve. I couldn't sleep last night. It was nightmares <laughs> dreaming of that fish. But we had this 45 to 50 pound fish right to the boat, and somebody didn't get his rod high enough, although somebody was standing in my way. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. He's been, he's been, you've been looking all night for excuses. Blame somebody else. Get your tip up. Get well, do that again, Jerry, I guess. You know, Dennis, it's taken you longer to get this fish in the boat than we've been out in the water. Let's go for well, it. Well, you know, I got a 30 yesterday, and, uh, this is bigger than 30, I'll bet you. Yeah, but you know? I got my 30 in. And I you want... lost your 45. Did you horse it? No, I didn't no, horse it. Right I just on. didn't keep the rod up high enough. Okay. No, don't start on that fish. <laughs> but this fish came up out of the water, and he had a head on him like this. I think that scared me more than anything. Is well, this... we got a chunk. We got some meat here. We got <clears throat> a big chunk of meat right here. Yeah, we better turn that rigger in. Is this great fishing, or is this great fishing? Oh. Hey? Eh? Haven't done this for years. I told you. Come on out west with me. Uh, come to Millbank Sound, and the home of the big fish. I'm glad I got the opportunity to do it. It's great. Yep. Did you hear what he said? Keep that keep, tip up, Keep Dennis. the tip up, Don. <laughs> you like these reels, Dennis? I love them. It's one in one action. It's uh, Knuckle not this, not action. this uh, four to one ratio <laughs> stuff. When Dennis come out, he says, I don't know about these reels. I haven't used them in a long time. It's a lot more fun than level wines, yeah. true or false. I've never used one, and I love it. It's You know, it's not that level wines are difficult or, or not fun yeah. to use, but it, you don't get the fun of a level wine, which you do with these knuckle busters. I'll have to check with my wife. I'll have to check with my wife when she's got Come on budget. already, I want to go fishing. <laughs> See if there's any money left in the budget to buy one of these. <laughs> have you got them, Dennis? I got them. I got one look at them, and I'd say it's about the same as yours, but... Well, how come it took me three minutes and you're at the 32-minute mark? Well, I'm into, uh, <laughs> I'm into sport fishing. <laughs> You're gonna get not, over the. You're gonna, go, you're gonna be into swimming if you don't get that fish. I'll in give the you boat a Bobby Bond here. <laughs> hey, you know my kid hates this word, but is this paradise? This is absolutely beautiful. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fishing. We've had great hosts here, right? Wish I could Thanks. get this sweater off. I'm getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I took mine off five minutes ago. You don't I see fish like I... that. Hey, we never saw fish this strong any time in the Great Lakes, so, you know, maybe no. we had a great fishery, but the fish out here in the saltwater environment, they don't compare. No, it's You just know, there's great. no comparison at all with, with what we were catching in Ontario. Not, no. our, not that our fish weren't nice, but these are real strong fish. And the other thing is, too, like, we got two springs on here, double header, that's fantastic, but there's some great coho here. You know, 30-pound fish together? Yeah. Well, maybe even bigger if we ever get a chance for you to get them in the boat. When you start catching 18-pound, 19-pound coho, that's... That's something. You'll, you'll see these guys, what they'll want to do usually, not always, but usually they'll want to sound and they won't want to come up. And sometimes they're going to try and get deeper, which this one's doing again. Yeah, yeah he just doesn't want to come up. He's The coho, they'll hit, a, hit that bait and they'll run to the boat. You think you've lost him. Next thing you know, he's almost jumping in your lap. Doesn't want to play with you, eh? Well, I think our guide's trying to get away from... Uh, the boats. Well, the boats and the, and the kelp. Is that what it's called, kelp? Kelp, yeah. yeah. Glorified seaweed. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it can be a pain. Well, yeah, but you want to fish close to the kelp beds because that's where the yeah. bait is, right? And that's where the big ones are going to be hanging out. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like a weed bed for them, right? Up here, they've got 100 spots to fish, but they're, they really target in on three or four spots, and you will get some boat traffic, right? right? And it takes a good guide to make sure that that fish is not going to be tangling in somebody else's line. Uh, rod tip up, rod tip up. coming at you. All right. I think he's maybe a little bigger than mine. I don't know. Is he smaller? I think he's smaller. My, Hell of a fight. My guy just said... 
Is he smaller? Fire. A little smaller. You heard the guide. I heard the guide, but <laughs> until it's on the scales on shore, we'll find out. Let's just hoist these two. As soon as uh, we settle this guy down, we're going to hoist him and just show him real quick. Rest my arm for about two minutes and... Uh, you know, that's the show. We don't have to... We can shut the cameras off and just... <laughs> <laughs> Again, and no fish story. Like, you can see the sun's not up yet. We came out. The rods weren't down 10 minutes. And well, you had, bang. what, a couple coho? I had a couple and coho. Then, uh, bang. And I said, bang, bang. the light just got perfect for filming, and it was a double header. Two we're, nice springs. We're going back in the kelp beds. I'm going to show you something. I'm not sure. If I'm going to show you something. And I just want to show you what really happens here up at Millbank Sound. That's, get that fish up here. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's that. uh, 15 minutes on the water. It doesn't get I would any say better. 60 pounds of fish? Yeah, 60 pounds worth. I'll bet you they'll both go 30 plus. <laughs> I'm putting it down because I'm getting strained. <laughs> well, let's get fishing. Mother, mother, mother. It doesn't get any done. better, buddy, let me tell you. Oh, thanks for the slide. <laughs> Going fishing returns with more salmon fishing at West Coast Resorts Millbank Sound. Mr. B. I think this one was down about 70 feet. Right? What, do you got, what do you got cooking there? I don't son? know what I got cooking. I got a, I think he's a coho? good fish, a good coho. I put that kingfisher on there, right? And he hit that. You got one on the other side, Dennis. Grab the rod, Dennis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, grab the rod. I got it. Hey, I got, I got it. that on the cameras running, buddy. Wow. Hot action, right? Double header. Another <laughs> one. Just like it used to be. Whoa. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I think you got a spring there, maybe. Hey. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice know. fish. Hey, and we just came right over the school of bait. I asked Steve about the fish finder here. They don't use it as a fish finder. It's more of watching some bait and watching bottom. Well, we ran over. Oh. oh. <laughs> Look at now he's under the boat. Look at this one. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Crazy fish. Pardon? Small spring. Okay, I'm gonna let this one go. I got a coho here. Have you got a coho? Oh. Okay, get out of my way. <laughs> Will you get out of the way? <laughs> Which way are you going? Hang on, Steve. Which way are you going? I'm gonna give the guide the rod. Look at that, he wrapped Look at that the thing. Size of that coho. He wrapped coho, that thing. baby. Hey, he wrapped that, eh? Look at the size of that, baby. Now, you wanna know something? I'm gonna tell you. Once and once only, my favorite oki, right? And yet, the other one came on that kingfisher too. Tell you something. All right. Once and once only. That's my favorite type of salmon right there, the <laughs> coho. Did you see him jump? Look at that. That's got to be 17, 18 pounds. Nice fish. He's starting coho. to get that hook nose, right? You want to know something else? What's that? Our guide Steve is releasing a small spring. That's what small I had. Yep. You know? You know what, Gronzy? We're going to fill our, our tags with big springs, put yep. the small ones back. But I am going to put this on my tag, this coho. This coho. <laughs> <laughs> this baby right here is going on the tag. Dennis, I'm gonna pull him back. I wanna show you something. The snout starting, right? Yeah, yeah. The kite starting. Yeah. Prime coho. So okay? that's a three-year-old? That's a three-year-old. Three they gain about a pound a week right now. Is that right? They're eating machines, but they go nutty when they get stung yeah. by a hook. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. Hey, that's a dandy. Nicely done. Put them I away, mean, buddy. I mean, nicely done by By you? By Put me. them away. <laughs> <laughs> nice net job by you. Nice fish. Thank you. It's a fact that flashers attract fish by both sight and sound. There's also the fact that these proven winners impart that frantic, injured action to a trailing bait or spoon. We can illustrate just how lethal these big plastic baits are in bringing in the big ones for the attack. In the past, flashers were available in both big and little shooters, taped with more than 130 designs that are in turn overlaid on 10 basic colored flashers leaving the angler with a choice of more than 1,300 possible color combinations. Now anglers have an even greater choice of flasher options. The folks at Oki have designed the all-new Kingfisher. It's a 17-inch flasher scientifically designed in the shape of a fish. It's lighter than the original flasher, and this baby comes in just as many color combinations as the original. Can it get any better?
Steve Davies, my favorite guide at West Coast Resorts. You know? Good to see you again. Three years in a row, what do you say? Oh, it's been great. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, buddy. Yeah. You know, Steve, we started with whole herring with the teaser heads earlier today, right when we caught those two big springs. Yes. I said later, can we put out some flashers? And I love my king fisher too, yeah. you know. Um, it's a new one on the market, catches lots of fish. And then you mentioned to me, what about your old favorite? Yeah, the old standby. Eh? This one catches me a lot of fish, there's no doubt about it. But that's only an attractor, it's nothing more than that. You still have to get the bait behind you. Show me how you rig up the okay, anchovy. Anchovy is pretty easy. You just grab the teaser head, grab the anchovy, stick it in the nose. A lot of Americans call it nose cones. Okay. And you have uh, dry toothpicks are always good. And you just push the toothpick through, break it off flush. So it's nice and clean. And that's going to hold the anchovy right there. That holds there. the anchovy in. And then um, we use uh, barbless triple hooks usually with it. And you just get behind the dorsal fin there and dig deep in there so it's laying fairly flat. And you can adjust your action with the bend of okay. the so you, anchovy. Okay, so you're leaving those two prongs sitting out there, right? Yes. You've got one berry. Yeah. And again, if you want to... Uh, a faster spin, you just you pull that a little tighter, Yeah. it causes the bend. Yeah. And this is only a five and a half, six inch bait, right? This is not as big as a full herring. No. Now, this is notorious for catching big fish, right? It is. I fished the west coast of Vancouver Island a lot of years, and this is pretty well the only ticket out there. Little bait, big fish. A lot of times it I'll is. Tell you what, pal, let's get the little baits out and let's go catch some big fish. You betcha. And thank you very much because this fishing has been great the last three days. Thank you. Going Fishing returns with Shore Lunch. Dennis Potvin. Now listen, I want to ask you something. You, re you don't remember Bernie Klimczak, eh? Old friend of mine that you fished with down in New York, Oak Orchard. Bernie, Bernie, Bernie K. Yeah, Crazy Pollock. Crazy Pollock. You remember him? The memory's coming back. Now he told me you were tough. Were you really that tough? Because I remember how tough you were. You were pretty tough, buddy. I was tough on myself. You know, <laughs> I think those. Remember we talked about last night yeah. a little bit. You and I were talking about uh, how guys had to take care of almost everything. You know, they weren't any specialists. Guys like Bobby Bond, you had to you had to take care of yourself in any manner. But I, I think overall, um, I tried to play it a hard game, but I don't know if I'd be considered tough. Dennis, I'm not being smart on this. This is just me saying it. The hockey 15 years ago, I mean, there weren't as many teams, right? And I think it was a better brand. I, and I'm just, just me saying it. And then I see you guys here. You got Bathgate, you got Bond, you got Bauer, I got Potvin, I got Busick, and I'm going, wow, this Legends of the Game is really something. Eh? I'm so glad to be part of it. I tell you what, this fishing derby has been terrific. And the guys you mentioned, you know, Andy Bathgate and, and, and you know, uh, Bobby Bond, Johnny Bauer, they all come from an era where you played against the same guys over and over again. So what happens is there are no secrets. If you've got one really good move, it'll last you till about November. It, and then you better find a new move because the whole league will know about it. Let me, one quick thing. This is going, the money from here is going from the Hockey Hall of Fame and it's going for spinal cord, uh, I, I want to say discovery because they're looking for new ways to, to uh, cure spinal so, cord injuries, right? Would you come back? Come back to? Back here? To the fishing lodge? Yeah. Is this an invitation? But you live in Florida. It's on no, camera. But hold it, no, I'm yeah, back. But hold it. You live in Florida. I am Florida. back. There's no problem. I'm here. Just give me the date. Everything will be you know, scheduled around it. I'll be we're, back. We're going to talk to Gaiden because you guys were absolutely phenomenal this year. Well, thanks a lot. It's been a real treat. And, you know, this lodge here, uh, you know, West Coast Resorts has been outstanding to us. And I can't tell you the comfort that we've had here. And uh, the fishing, as you know, has been phenomenal. i got to say thank you very much. And it's great meeting a legend. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and now for the Montana's Cookhouse Tip of the Week. Leader length from flasher to bait is important and dependent upon the species of fish you're chasing. Coho, pink, and sockeye will readily attack a bait and flasher or spoon and flasher combination that measures from 18 to 25 inches in length. For Chinook, lengthen the leader to between 22 and 44 inches. 
bait type lures with their own action such as herring or anchovy strips and heads can be increased from 24 to 72 inches in length. Glenn Gatsky, I've got to say something. I think the cook is always the most important person at a lodge. Well, uh, I like to think so too. We've got to keep everybody happy and well fed out there on the water. Uh, today what we're going to do is a dish called uh, Salmon Meunier. Got a nice uh, filet of uh, fresh spring salmon here. This is a guest fish. I'm going to show you how this we cut this for the dish, but I'm not actually going to cut it up because this one's going home with a guest tomorrow. Okay. So when we skin it, we just slide the knife along the skin underneath the cut down and it just slides right out. And then when we actually portion this, we cut at an angle down like this, and what we end up with is this. Here, this portion is out of the belly, and that's a steak through the thick of the meat. What is the name of this again? It's called uh, Salmon Meunier. It's very simple, a traditional French way to cook fish. And it's very simple, just about anybody can do it. And uh, we're going to show Go you, take a crack at it, and show you how it's done. Okay, I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to give you some here. We're going to warm up the pan with a little bit of olive oil in there. Next step is we throw in a little bit of uh, fresh butter and we'll let that heat up just a little bit. While that's melting, we're going to take a piece of this nice fresh salmon. We're going to dredge it in a little bit of flour so it's nicely coated. This does a couple of things. It, uh, the flour helps to thicken the sauce a little bit and it gives you a nice brown finish to the fish. So we're nice and hot now. We're going to throw that in. And that's, uh, we're gonna let that sizzle a bit. Okay, we're just gonna flip that over and let's see what the, uh, that side looks like. You'll notice that the butter is starting to brown a little bit. That's called a bernoisette, which is a classic uh, part of a butter sauce. And we'll let that cook and heat up a little bit more. Okay, while that's going, we're just gonna put on a little bit of veg to accompany our dish. That's a bit of clarified butter in there. A little broccoli, a little piece of, uh, grilled yellow pepper and that's just about ready there and there we go. That's white wine in there? That's a little white wine. Adds a little spark to the occasion. Yeah, right? it does, it does. Okay, and a little salt pepper on there and finish it with lemon and then we'll go plate. I kind of like the white wine better than the lemon but anyway. It's not as flashy <laughs> but it's certainly a key ingredient in the taste. Now, the Great Gatsky, is this ready to eat? It certainly is. And one more time, what is this called? It's called Salmon Meunier. I uh, usually eat my salmon with my fingers, but because you've added the Meunier, right? <laughs> I'm going to use the fork, how's that? Okay, well, it is a little classy for fingers. Mm. Mm. A1, number one, Mr. Gatsky. Thank you very much. Thank Glad you. you. enjoyed it. This is great. I'm just going to mosey back to the table with it. Okay. We'll see you later. Hey, buddy. Was this fun? Fantastic. Was this not the best fishing trip you've ever been on? Positively. You know, what can you say? You got big, big fish. A couple 30-pounders. Great lodge. Great lodge. Great, great guests. People, great people working here. Great everything up here. Fantastic. Listen, if you get the opportunity, don't pass up the chance to get to Millbank Sound, West Coast Resorts, Northwestern BC. The fishing is always hot. Always hot. I love this place. Going Fishing has been brought to you by Yamaha Motor Canada, Abu Garcia, and by Berkeley Triley. Going Fishing would like to thank the following fine sponsors. Going Fishing. Going Fishing. Baby, smile my way. Gonna have a great day for competition. Going Fishing.